Hi and welcome to the vlog. I hope you're all well. I'm expecting the girls in about half an hour. So I'm just putting Alice's little bag together. So she's getting some Swedish sweets. And today we are going to Santa's Grotto. So that's going into Alice's advent calendar bag. And on top of all the rest of the advent calendars that are lying here underneath the tree. I haven't got presents under the tree yet. I've got advent calendars, so many. Um, apart from the bag, because the bag I only do on the days that I see Alice, uh, apart from the bag, the girls have got a lot of boxes to open in the advent calendars because they've not been here for a while. But that's not the topic of today's vlog. <laughs> the topic of today's vlog is, is my coffee ready yet? Uh, that's not the topic either. Um, gift ideas for a disabled child. I was speaking to a friend last night and I went on a rant about how blooming difficult Eileen is to buy for. Ah, it is really difficult to buy presents for Eileen. And of course, when then my family members come to me and go, right, what do the girls want for Christmas? What do the girls want for their birthday? And I'm like, I don't know. Um, <coughs> Alice. Alice is much easier. Alice is a six-year-old child. She loves watching YouTube. She sees all these adverts for weird and wonderful toys that change color when you dip them in water or that are surprises when you open them up. You know, these egg things that you open. And she loves all of that kind of stuff. And she wants all of it, you know. And, and to Alice, things are still really important. She wants stuff. Eileen doesn't play with stuff. Eileen doesn't care for it. It's not relevant for her. It's not a part of her world. So what do you do then? I mean, Eileen's favorite part of a Christmas present is the gift ribbons. She's like a baby in that respect, right? She's obviously not a baby, but like the best part of a Christmas gift is the curly ribbon, curly colorful ribbon because then she can hold it and she can look at it and light reflects of it and it feels weird and she rubs her face in it. What's in the present is much less important. Coffee is ready. Mm. Yeah, so I'm gonna pop in here that I have made an Amazon wish list for parent XP for me and the girls because a few of you have requested it and I'm just, so grateful at the thought of it. I feel a bit awkward asking for it. So, okay, let me say it this way. I'm not asking any of you to give us things. We don't, you know, we don't need that. We don't expect that. But if there is any of you who want to give us things, then we are ever so grateful. And there is a list on, on Amazon. And the link for that list is going into a link in this video. Does it go there? It either goes there or it goes there. <laughs> I can never remember. I can never work it out. Uh, and I'm also popping it in the description of the video below. And this is only if you want to, there are no expectations on our side. Uh, what's in that list is things that I kind of feel I need, but I'm not putting my money on because I have more important things to put my money on, like a new electric toothbrush. <laughs> Not a very exciting present, but actually kind of a needed present. Um, so there's things like that, things that I would like for us as a family or for me, for myself, but I'm just not putting my money on. Uh, there are things that Alice wants and they are very toy based. And then there are things that Eileen needs or Eileen could have use of. And Eileen's gifts are not toy based at all, because as I say, Eileen doesn't really play. There are very few things that Eileen plays with. But this is a vlog about gift ideas for a disabled child. So I'm gonna share with you some things to think about if you're gifting for a disabled child and some of the best things that we have gifted Eileen with over the years, or Eileen has been gifted with over the years. Uh, so thing number one is that all disabled children are not the same. <laughs> What works for one doesn't work for another. There are plenty of disabled children out there who do play, who can play, who are super excited about playing. Uh, and for them, certain kinds of toys are definitely relevant and appropriate. Um, 
And then there are children who, like Elin, can't play with things independently. And then, you know, specific toys for these children might not be as relevant. There have been a few toys that Elin has gotten over the years that have been amazing. This is one of them. Elin got this when she was just over a year old, uh, a year and a half almost. It's a, it's called a Crawl and Learn Bright Light Ball. So it's got a, a kind of weight in it that moves around. So when you put this on the floor, it will roll around and it, it, it'll roll back and forth. And it makes a noise. Elin loved this one as a child. We're not using it as much anymore. Elin's 10 and I've kind of had enough of baby toys. Does this make me a bad special needs mum? I don't want more baby toys in my house. Um, you know, Elin's 10, Alice is almost seven. I'm done with baby toys, thank you. Um, but yes, this one has been an absolute godsend for Elin in so many ways, partly because it plays with her rather than she playing with it. So we could lay her on the floor, lay this one next to her, turn it on with the music. It would roll up to her and bump into her. And that was great. Or she would sit and hold it in her arms and she would dip her face down because this thing spins with the light and makes this cracking sound and she would put her mouth on it and she would feel it go and she thought that was hysterical. So this has been one of the best toys ever and I mean I think it says a lot that she got it when she was, well she got it nine years ago. We still, I still have it. And there's a second one that is at her dad's. So yeah, great, great, great gift idea, this one. The other toy that Elin plays with, this is gonna get noisy. First aid blanket, foil blanket. We call them space blankets. Elin loves these because of the noise. Again, I can lay Elin on it and she will move and she will kick and she will roll and create this sound. And she thinks it's the best thing since sliced bread, really. She thinks it's so, so funny. Um, so this is one of the very few things that Elin can play with independently. At school, she has things like soundboard that she will lie on and as she moves, it makes different sounds. And again, she loves it. She thinks that's brilliant. That space blanket that is now making more noises by itself. Again, it's a great toy. And um, that space blanket, I got Elin for Christmas last year and I still have several from the pack because it's like a multi-pack of them. Um, so there's no point in me getting her another one, another pack of those this year because we still have loads. This is another thing that I've given Elin Actually, she's got a few of them by now. Uh, I get these from the RSPBA, the Royal Society for the, the RSPCA, RSPB. Give me a moment. RSPB, Royal Society for the Protection of Birds. We have a uh, RSPB uh, park in Bedfordshire in Sandy. Uh, where you can go and walk in nature and do bird spotting and that kind of stuff. And in their gift shop, they have these. And they have real bird sound. Now Luca woke up. We have a few of these with different sounds. Now they're real bird sounds, so they're not as annoying as the sort of electronic nah, 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 I'm a baby toy thing that I don't like. And Eileen really likes these bird sounds, but somebody has to play with them for Eileen. She cannot press press it to make it make a sound. But you know, it's kind of a sweet thing, and it's a nice sound, and she sort of enjoys it. My brother has, over the years, given Eileen a couple of different sets of buttons. You know, the things that you press, and it makes a sound of some sort or another. So I've got ones that go ding dong and other noises, and then I have a set that say yes, no, maybe, and sorry. Uh, and those are things that Eileen, when in the right position, she can play with independently. So if Eileen's sitting somewhere where she has a flat surface underneath her arms, we get the button on, then she can, with quite a lot of hard work, press the buttons. At school, she's got head buttons that she's using to learn to communicate and make her own choices. I don't have that set up here at home. Um, but again, those buttons have actually been pretty good and she finds them quite funny, particularly the ones that go, sorry, 
it? And she's like, hur, hur, hur. because we all know that Eileen is a little pest, right? She gets up to, she gets up to a lot of um, tricks. And yes, I think they are deliberate. I mean, Eileen, when Eileen is being given developmental updates, you know, by by professional, but not professionals, but uh, developmental updates um, by professionals. Sorry, that was better. That was very. Uh, I didn't mean it to come across quite so um, derogative as it did. Uh, her mental age is often put as less than a two-year-old, and that's not true. Eileen's mental age is much higher than a two-year-old. She's very smart. She's got a good sense of humour. She is sarcastic as, uh, and uh, she can actually do a lot of things. She chooses a lot of her reactions, is what I mean to say. She can't do things um, deliberately because she doesn't have the hand movement or the, the, the motor skills for that. But like I've been saying for, for years now that Eileen can make herself throw up to get attention. And I've had doctors going, no, she wouldn't do that. And I'm like, oh, trust me, Eileen does that. Um, and she will definitely vocalize to get what she wants. Like she can be okay, but she's just bored and she'll start screeching in her chair because seriously, get me out of here, I'm done. So yes, manipulative, she can definitely be. Eileen loves music and she loves audiobooks. And nowadays we stream music and we stream audiobooks. And here we come back to this thing about gifting stuff, gifting things. I can't wrap up a, I can't wrap a music file. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that just sorry that really amused me I can't rap I can't rap a piece of music uh, of course I can that's what actually Ellie quite likes rap music she's very fond of Eminem for example um, <laughs> stick on topic try back get back to it come on come back come back let's get to this I mean I stream music on Amazon music and I stream it on YouTube music and it's not like we no longer give albums or CDs or cassettes that's how old I am. If Eileen was around when I was a child, I would have made Eileen a mixtape, okay? With her favorite songs, and I would probably have recorded them off the radio. I've been sitting there by the radio as it's playing just to catch the song, just as it starts. Oh yeah, totally. Totally, I would have done that. Um, but yeah, she loves music, and nowadays we stream music as digital files. And so it's not a thing to give. And the same with audiobooks. Nowadays, we, you know, I get audiobooks on, um, you stream them online. Um, there are apps for these things. So again, it's not a physical thing to gift, but these are some of Eileen's absolute favorite things. She will sit in her chair and she will listen to music and she will laugh out loud and she's super happy. Um, and so that's, that's something she gets from me a lot. Other things are sensory. Anything sensory, anything that smells. So I give Eileen scented candles and she loves it. And we burn aroma oils and she loves it. Again, this is not suitable for everybody. For some people, aroma oils can trigger migraines or they can trigger seizures. Eileen really likes it. She thinks it's lovely. And so a nice scented candle is a great thing for her. That's what she's getting from me this year for Christmas. It's a nice scented candle because we put it on in her room and it smells nice. It also gets rid of the smell of the dirty pads. Um, and so it's a benefit, it's a benefit for all of us. We all like it. I can, I can have some nice calming oils going in my aroma diffuser and, and it just really helps all of us wind down for the night and have a good evening. Then I have, this was her stocking filler last year. It's a uh, pawpaw ointment uh, for skin, lips, hands and cuticles. Um, Eileen gets dry lips a lot, particularly when she's in hospital and she's dehydrated and she's vomiting and she's got all of this stomach acid coming up, her lips crack and bleed. So lip balms are always a must for Eileen. And uh, hand creams or oils, massage oils to sit and massage her hands. And again, we got this sensory thing of the nice smell. So we do that kind of stuff for Eileen a lot as well. And she really likes it. And feet massage, foot massage uh, is what I meant to say. And that has just reminded me, and this is going up on Parent XP's Amazon wish list. Uh, Eileen gets a foot spa in school quite often, and it's her favorite thing. So when she's given a choice between a foot spa and something else, she will choose the foot spa because she really loves it. So that is actually would be a gift that would be really, really, really good for her. It's a foot spa. 
Huh, I, re I need to remember to put that on the Amazon wish list straight away, as soon as I'm done with this video. Um, and then something that I personally do not like. Check with the parents of the disabled child you're giving it to if this is suitable or not. I think a lot of people love them. I know a lot of people certainly give them. I throw away several every year. Okay, I'm sorry if you are one of the people who have given these to us over the years. I'm sorry, I throw them out because I have too many. I can't have that many. The toys that are marketed as sensory toys, they are like this rubber thing and they have a flashing light inside them when you bounce them. They come in star shape, they come in round ones, they, uh, and you have these like uh, soft silicon things that you squidge around and you have these things on sticks and they are cheap, they are easy to get hold of, and they're always marketed as sensory toys, and I hate them. I'm sorry, I do, I hate them. I don't think they're great. They're just things lying around collecting dust in my house. Eileen doesn't play with them. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I actually try to avoid getting them now, like if they're given out at an event, I'll go, you know what, you can take these back, thank you very much, but they're not, they're not for us, they're not suitable. So, uh, yes, maybe I'm making myself unpopular here, um, but there are things that really aren't suitable for somebody. And I mean, the same thing with like, yes, Eileen probably still enjoys baby toys, but I don't. And I'm the adult in this house and I need to have things for my children that don't drive me insane. Uh, for example, I don't really allow uh, Eileen to listen to Baby Shark. She thinks it's funny. I don't. Let's put on some Rihanna instead and we can both have a good time, okay? <sighs> I'm really going off in rants now, aren't I? Mm. Yeah, and then it's um, other things that Eileen always needs is new clothes because she's growing and her legs are very long. So new clothes and warm slippers and... Um, covers for the wheelchair, things like that are always really useful. Not blankets, I've got more blankets than a grown woman needs. Uh, I've got more blankets than any woman needs really. Um, but yeah, things like that are always really, really useful. For some reason, I have no jumpers for Eileen at the moment. I don't know why, there are just no jumpers for her at all. Um, Dad doesn't have any either, so I think she's had a whole bunch and she's outgrown them and we just haven't got any new ones. Um, but yeah, a lot of stuff for Eileen is practical stuff. Lip balm, hand cream, clothes. Just, and it's, it's not very exciting, but it's very, very useful. Uh, and I think for a lot of parents of disabled children, it's worthwhile thinking of those things. Um, for anyone with a child in a wheelchair, you wanna what you wanna think about with the clothes is are the clothes soft? Uh, are they comfortable around the waist when you're sitting down for hours? So I don't really like dressing Ellen in jeans because I can imagine that sitting in jeans for hours it's cut in here and here and it'll be quite uncomfortable. Um, Ellen doesn't need big bulky pockets. I mean I'm I'm always a fan for pockets in girls' clothes and women's clothes, but it's kind of irrelevant for Eileen. And then it's just a bulky thing right where her um, lap belt of her wheelchair goes. Um, long trousers. Make them longer when you have a child in a wheelchair. I think that's really important because when you're sitting down, they always ride up, obviously. And we want to make sure we cover the ankles and go all the way down to the shoes on Eileen. Eileen gets cold very easily as well. She doesn't have great circulation. So, um, you know, I don't like having... Uh, an ankle gap like that. So those are things that are always worthwhile thinking about. Um, wheelchair covers are always good. She has one now. Um, whilst I like the wheelchair cover she has at the moment, it doesn't cover the back of her legs, it only covers the front. Um, so that is something that's worthwhile thinking about if you're thinking of getting a, a, a wheelchair cozy for a child in a wheelchair is does it cover the back as well as the front? Like, does it go all the way around? Does it fit over the child's foot plate, the wheelchair foot plate? That's a relevant one to think about. Um, yeah. Warm clothes or waterproof clothes, will they go under or over the wheelchair harness easily are things that are worthwhile thinking about. 
um, yeah, stuff like that. I have no idea if I've really made any sense. Well, no, I have a lot. I have made a lot of sense in this. I don't know if I've managed to stick to uh, a coherent thread or if I've just been jumping back and forth. <laughs> I've possibly just been jumping back and forth. But I need to start getting ready for the girls coming home now. It is a Sunday, and uh, we have a lot of exciting things to do today. So uh, you can check those out in the next vlog. Thank you so much for watching. See you again very soon. Bye.